All right, so now you understand uh, the basics of how the system tree works. Uh, you understand how policies are used to configure uh, the software and how client tasks are used to add and remove software, run scans, et cetera, et cetera. So let's uh, install uh, the agent on a new system. Um, we're going to do this manually. Um, eventually, uh, when you have AD Sync, it'll be a little bit easier. The only three requirements that you need, particularly for the workstations, to install the agent, you need to make sure that uh, the Windows firewall allows file and print sharing as an exception and TCP port 8081. You also need um, administrative credentials. Um, and the EPO server needs to be able to communicate with the client machine. The EPO server is on the 172 network segment and should have full access into your network. Um, but if we run into problems, then we'll need to troubleshoot from a network perspective. Uh, in terms of enabling the Windows firewall, um, you can do that with a GPO. There is a GPO um, that you can link to, um, and that is available on the uh, wiki site. So, let's take a look and actually deploy the agent. I have here a XP VM virtual machine. Uh, and as you can see, there's no McAfee installed on this. So let's put it on there and see what happens. Again, for testing purposes, navigate to where you want to put the uh, machine. And you click on New Systems. You're going to accept basically the, the defaults to deploy the agent and add it to where you want it, or where it's in the tree and put in the name, you can put in an IP address, um, you're going to accept the defaults, and then you're going to put in your administrator credentials. I'm going to intentionally um, put in an incorrect account. I'm going to leave out my OU, just to show you what's the failure, what a failure looks like. And that's it. You're going to sit, click OK. And as long as the machine is on the network, um, it will also go. Now, it should automatically go over to the server task log. But as you can see, um, this task failed immediately. Um, we'll get into more on the server task log uh, at the end of it. But as you can see, you can click into the event. You click down here, and you'll see that it said, Fail to authenticate tells you unknown username or password. It will give you various other uh, error messages. For example, if the machine is not on the network, it would say it could not find the network path. So let's go back over. We'll go over here to systems. We're back to our system tree. We're going to click new systems, and we'll do it correctly this time. This goes fairly quickly. Um, and we should see this um, agent install very quickly. And away we go. We'll navigate over here to the server task log and um, we'll take a look at how it's going. Now remember, once the agent um, is um, installed, the agent will then communicate back to the EPO server and gather all the policies and tasks. We've set up our group to immediately start installing um, the um, virus scan, anti-spyware agent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So as soon as the agent's installed, it'll start downloading and installing um, virus scan. This can happen pretty quick. Uh, it can take anywhere from five to twenty minutes before you have both the agent and virus scan installed. In the case, if you already have a virus scan 8.7, then it will simply note that it's, uh, when the agent will do an inventory, see that you have 8.7 and not install 8.7 on top of it. If you have an older version, 8.0i or 8.5, it will upgrade that to 8.7. If you have a version earlier than 8.0i, you'll need to manually remove that before pushing out the agent. So, so there we have that all doing. Let's go back and we'll take a look. You're going to look in reporting, server task log, and you'll notice it's been completed. So that's a success. We'll give it a few minutes, and um, if you're physically at the machine, 
Um, the Asian is a very light install. No reboot is required, and your users will not notice that. When virus scan is installed, um, you, it will, a reboot is not required. The users may notice a little bit of lag time, and you will definitely notice some hard drive activity once it's installed. While we're waiting for that to complete, we'll take a look at the server task log uh, and other logs available. As you can see, um, you will be able to see all the server tasks running across uh, Gannett. So you will not only see your tasks, but also tasks from other folks and the tasks done by the global admins here at Gannett IT. So you can scroll through that and take a look. Um, you'll see, for example, the hour hourly AD sync running in here um, and various other scheduled tasks. Um, you'll also be able to see um, other tasks that perhaps other admins are taking into account. Should you want a much more granular view, you can go over here to the audit log and again everybody can see everything so you can see this one has much more detail um, and you can see where I added a system, deploying the agent, etc etc so you can go in here and take a look this can be uh, very helpful if um, you need to that something has changed you're not sure when it changed and it may have been done by uh, one of your colleagues who's on vacation or you want to make sure that um, one of the global admins didn't make a change and didn't tell you about them so this gives you complete transparency and seeing uh, what is occurring uh, within EPO the event log is all the events uh, such as malware detections that are being fed from the clients up to the EPO server. So this can be uh, fairly big um, and um, you can scroll through that and take a look at it. Um, it can be quite cumbersome. There's a lot of events in here and the real way to take a look at that is to use the reporting and querying possibility uh, option. So up here on the upper left is your query option and you'll see a number of canned queries default queries that we've set up that you can take a look at and it can report on various um, things for example the basic report is the EPO Windows compliance summary there should be a little bit of information there and you'll simply click run you'll notice in the report uh, generates um, some cases uh, bar graphs can also gives you a table view and the nice thing about it is you can drill down on these tables and it drills you right down into more detailed information you can also um, export these reports you can go down to the options and export the data and you have the different options and you can uh, do just the top level chart or you can do the drill down tables which you just saw you can do it as individual so files or into a zip and you have different options for CSV, XML, HTML, PDF you have the options to simply have it um, download to your machine or you can email the file um, and put in addresses here with the subject line very nice feature so take a look at some of those queries um, as I mentioned before, the queries uh, are also what your dashboard is based on. So if there's a particular dashboard view you'd like to need or like to see, see if it exists here in the query, and then you can add it to your dashboard. You also have full rights to add your own query. So if you'd like to add your own query, you can simply click, click New Query and go through the wizard. I'm not going to go through all the details of that, um, but that'll be for some other training, or you can do it yourself. So those are the um, basic uh, areas within the reporting portion of the EPO console.